Just wave your hand wherever you are. Welcome, welcome to all of you. We still have uh, Jillian's sister, Gladdy, with us. Gladdy, we are glad to have you. And take our glad greetings back to your family and friends when you do go home. So if you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're thankful and you know it, say praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Every Sabbath we have the opportunity of giving our minds a weekly holiday. Do you know that? You can give your mind a holiday. Have you given your mind a vacation this morning? We leave all the worries with the Lord Jesus Christ. He has all the power and ability to fix all that up. Amen. And today we worship Him and grow in His love and in His presence. There's two things I'd like to do uh, before we begin our divine worship this morning. Uh, actually, four things. One of it is to wish Jillian happy birthday. Uh, may the Lord bless you, Jillian. Uh, what a special birthday to be on the Sabbath. Look at that. Everybody say happy birthday, Jillian. May the Lord bless you. Give you the desires of your heart and have a wonderful, blessed Sabbath day, you and your family. And then I'd like to announce that this yesterday afternoon at 4.20, I think it was, baby Algin, baby Algin Isaac. Huh, can you believe that? Baby Algin Isaac was born to the Acosta family, to Elima and Gigi. Everybody say amen this morning. May the Lord bless them wherever they are at the hospital. What a, what a gift and a blessing for Elima and Gigi. That's wonderful. And then, uh, folk, we are so glad this morning to welcome into our church membership. I guess there's a few people we have to still do that for, but this morning uh, we want to welcome Danielle. We're going to invite uh, the pizza maker, storyteller this morning, who gave us some wonderful lessons. Danielle, come forward. You gave a lovely story this morning. Where did you find that story? Um, I found it online. <laughs> well, that's good work. That's good work. It takes time to go online and research and find things. And didn't you like uh, the wonderful lessons of cheese and all of that on the pizza? She said the cheese is, represents the word of God that is sprinkled in our hearts so that we can be new people and that we can uh, display the fruits of the Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful story, Daniel. Yeah, we welcome you this morning to our church. All those who this morning are in favor of voting our uh, young lady, Daniel Estera, sent omen into Surrey Filipino membership this morning. Let me hear you say amen. And let me let all the uh, members this morning raise your hand as we vote. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Only there's one opposed this morning. Sorry to tell you that. And that is the devil himself. He doesn't like children of God, you know, he hates them. So, Daniel, this is your baptismal certificate as a very precious memory for you of your wonderful occasion there at uh, this beautiful lake. Can you pronounce that lake for us? Kaukawa. Kaukawa. Wasn't that a beautiful place? And may the Lord bless you as you grow in Jesus, sit at his feet and grow in this journey and be ready for his coming, okay? God bless you. Oh, it's also a birthday yesterday. Everybody say happy birthday, Daniel. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Another hug for your birthday. Bless God. Let's put our hands together for Daniel. And for especially a young lady that's given her heart to the Lord and to be, become an active member in the church of God. Praise the Lord for that. One more pleasant duty. And that is, we're going to invite all our students, all our children who are going to school. I'm going to invite you to come forward, and we're going to have special prayer for you. I'm going to ask my, our head elder to join me in front here. 
all our students let's come and gather here this morning Come on guys, let's gather up in front. Come in front, let's all kneel together in front here. Come, all our students. Come everyone. Even if you're an adult and if you think you're a student, come and join us here if you're learning. Come on, let's all kneel together here. Let's hold somebody's hand. Touch somebody's hand. Let's do that. So are you happy to be back at school guys? Well, I got a mixed reaction. Some said yes, some said no. Some say maybe. Well, we're so glad. What a privilege you guys have. And I take it most of you, most of you go to Fraser Valley. What a privilege. Parents, thank you so much for sacrificing for all your lovely kids here. May the Lord bless your finances. And guys, this morning we are very proud of you. And we thank God for the wonderful way in which you bless us as parents with your gifts and talents and the joy we receive from you. Let's pray a prayer of blessing on your school life. Dear Lord, what a precious moment this morning for all our school kids to gather here to be blessed by you, be, to be touched by the Spirit of God so that we can be strong, we can be successful, we can be happy in Jesus. I pray that you bless every boy and girl gathered here this morning in the name that shed his blood for us and to bring us the blessings of heaven where we'll, we'll never thirst and never hunger again. I trust this morning, dear Father, that each of them here this day will surrender their lives to you and surrender every day for the rest of their lives, their future into your capable hands. I pray a blessing, heaven's choicest blessing upon them this morning, upon their personal lives. Strengthen them inwardly and outwardly, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I pray, Father, that you would help them to be successful in their studies. Give them spiritual energy, divine energy to accomplish their goals and their tasks at school. Make them bright. Where they are weak, make them strong. Where they are foolish, make them wise. And may they live up to good lives so that others may respect and admire them. Lord, I pray that you give them safe traveling mercies every day, back and forth in that bus to Fraser Valley and back home. Give them guidance and protection. Dear Father, I also pray that you will bless them physically. Whatever they eat and drink, that it will be nourishing and stimulating to their intellect, their body, and their, and their soul. We thank you so much for your love for us. And I pray that you will overshadow the kids. Bless the parents. Many are, are sacrificing to pay the heavy fees and transportation. Continue to bless them with a double portion of your blessing. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And touch each one of these children today. Whatever their needs are, their pains, their anxieties, and worries. Remove all of that and provide for them in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless all of you. Happy school year. I was invited by the Surrey English Church last night to open up their family life weekend. This week is their family life. So the family life department invited me to open it up last night. 
And it was a wonderful blessing to gather with the folk there and uh, start off something about their family. And their theme was so inspiring that I thought I'll share that with you this morning. And the theme is family witness. That's a wonderful theme when you think about that, you know. We always talk about witnessing as a church, individuals and so forth. But when you think about witnessing in a family context, it's so special. And it's unlimited. And it's also a very creative exercise and ability. So let's pray this morning and ask the Spirit to bless us. Dear Lord, enable me to share this morning to our loving families here how they could be used to bring honor and glory to your name and meet their best potential. I pray that you would bless us all as a church family and individual families. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The family is the cornerstone of society, true? The family is the cornerstone of society, true? You know, a bad home makes a bad society. That's the truth about it. A good home makes a good society. We cannot overcalculate the power of the family. You know, a, a well-organized family, a well-adjusted family, a well-disciplined family is a powerful force for good in the church and in society. True? That's my prayer, that the Lord will make you a well-organized, well-oiled machinery, a well-adjusted family to be a blessing. God had a purpose in designing families. Did you know that? And let's, look at, uh, let's look at why did God give us and institute the family institution. Let's read this statement before we continue. Family is not an important thing, it's everything. Isn't that true? It's everything. And if you would uh, pick up that bottom line there, the greatest treasure that we have is our family. Amen? Who's ready to throw their family away? We live in a world where husbands and wives shoot themselves, kill themselves. And the news at the moment is a cardiologist will kill these two children. And there's, there was a dad yesterday who left his son in a hot car so that he could die. And he claimed he'd forgotten him, but he wanted to be, live a free life. And so he's now charged with manslaughter. We live in a sad world where families are abused, destroyed. Isn't that something? Very sad world. And families is God's plan. Really, that's God's plan. And there's a real purpose and, and a reason why God created families. Would you like to know that purpose this morning? Would you like to know that purpose this morning? Hmm. Looks like nobody wants to know about that purpose this morning. Uh, yeah, God didn't only uh, purpose us so that we multiply and... Uh, and we have kids be fruitful and multiply, as the Bible says. That's not the only thing, but that was the only method in which the earth would be populated through families. Loving families. Here's reason number one why God designed the family. So that we can experience a sense of love and belongingness. In this troubled world, our home supposed to be places of refuge where we can be shielded from the conflicts and the disputes and the troubles of life and find rest, peace, well-being and happiness. Amen? That's what the family was for. We uh, face uh, many chances and troubles out there, but at least when we come home, it's a place of refuge and joy. So that's one of the reasons and purposes for the family. For our well-being and happiness. Another reason and purpose why God created families. Somebody, all of you read number two. Come on. Have you ever thought about that? That God wanted our homes to be models 
of heaven. The peace and joy of heaven, you see. And somebody wrote that uh, little uh, photo that I have there, and this is what they said. If we are peaceful, if we are happy, we can blossom like a flower, and everyone in our family, our entire society will benefit from the peace. Isn't that wonderful? Look what somebody else also said. Jesus, this is a prayer by the way, please let my home be a haven of peace and blessing for all who enter here. Amen? That's why God designed families, so that our homes can be a miniature heaven on earth. All that God designed in relationships will be experienced, will be experienced in the home. Because the home is under attack today. Really, very much. The love of a family is life's greatest blessings. True? Amen? You know, by, by nature and with the challenges of life, families drift apart. Naturally. Because of sin in this world. It's a struggle to come together. It's a struggle to grow together. But love keeps us going. And keeps is the glue that sticks us keeps us stuck together for happy homes yes some rules let's read it together come on guys if you got good eyesight let's read it again number one rule number two number three number four that's an important one too eh number five that's right number six be courageous number seven from out of your heart flows the issues of life. And number eight, forgive freely. Number nine, and number ten, that's how you have a miniature, that's how you have heaven on earth in your homes. Good rules to follow. All right, there's the third reason why God designed families. That's why I love that theme, you know. Family witness. How can we witness as a family? The third reason is that God designed us as family so we can be ambassadors for Him. Amen? That's what we read this morning in the scripture. We are ambassadors. And that's what the Bible says about that. Yeah, well, in 2 Corinthians 5.20. Let's all read that together. Come on. at that we must never never forget our high calling we are God's ambassadors that's a beautiful word when you think of ambassadors you think of these men that represent their countries they represent their kings their queens and they go out proudly raising up their country's flags and, and their country's values and, and achievements and rewards. That's who we are too. We also represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Let's not forget that, guys. Sometimes we forget who we are. We think we're just insignificant and nothing, you know. We wonder, what is my purpose on this planet? Why was I born? Where am I going? Why am I here? I wish I was dead. Sometime with the heavy grind and challenges of life, we are uh, not even happy waking up some mornings. We wish we can sleep the whole day. That's how we feel. At that. But don't forget, God designed families to, to be His diplomats, to be His representatives. He is making His appeal through us, inviting the world to come to Him. I like that word. Uh, I like that word. Uh, of course, let's look at that. That means we are we are supposed to be kingdom-driven families. I hope you will surrender this morning to your high calling and receive the benefit of what God designed us to be as families. Kingdom-driven families. That's what I'd like you to, to commit today before you leave. And not that, not that you will uh, just continue with the daily functions and chores of life and the needs of life. No! 
but that we will commit to be kingdom-driven families. Building a home that serves Christ and His kingdom. That's what our calling is. Amen? True? Is that true, guys? If that is true, then you say amen, you see. That's so true. That's so true. So ambassadors represent their countries, governments, and kings. We even have student ambassadors. Fraser Valley students. There's a high calling for you too. You're not just going to a Christian school for nothing. It means that you are going to represent Christ. And you're going to be an ambassador for Him. You know, uh, let's talk to our students for a minute or two. Let's talk to our students. I see they all congregate on one side. You're an ambassador even on the volleyball field. Did you know that? You're an ambassador for Jesus in the soccer field. You're an ambassador for Jesus wherever you play, in the park, at school, at home, anywhere. Isn't that true? You're an ambassador for the Lord even when you go to the superstore. Really? You're an ambassador for the Lord. You're an ambassador for the Lord wherever you go. True? Even if you meet a boy one day and a girl one day and you you're in love and you're about to be married. You're an ambassador for Christ. Amen? And you pull your partner up to your standards. Don't let him pull you down to his standards. You pull him up and then you will be admired and respected. So we're all ambassadors of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'd like you to follow the second part. This is very interesting. You see? We implore you on Christ's behalf. That's what families purpose to do on behalf of Christ we implore you neighbor friend the world family member we implore you to be reconciled to God you see there's an imbalance at the moment like uh, like the business of a company that reconcile comes from a business world you do a bank and reconciliation statement at the end of the day the company has more loss than profit and uh, how do we reconcile that statement so we in the same situation. You see, with God, we're on the lost side, deficit side. You see, because of sin. And Jesus said, don't worry, I'll balance the books for you. How's that? That's what salvation is about. I'll balance the books for you. So we can have a reconciliation statement, yeah? And you'll be reconciled with God. We were in strange reconciliation also means... Uh, Husband and wife have become estranged. We can talk a little bit about that. So just, just, just bear with me a few seconds. We can talk about all of that now. Husband and wife are estranged. Son and daughter are estranged. Brother and sister are estranged. There's no hope for a reconciliation, you see. That's what reconciliation is all about. But you know something? It's hard for us to reconcile sometimes. Very hard. We'll say, well, you need to reconcile first. You need to, then I will reconcile. But, but the reconciliation that God is offering us is that He's been offended, but yet He made the first move to come and reconcile with us. Amen? You misunderstand your salvation. You will, you will be on cloud nine. You'll be bubbling over. You'll have the joy of the Lord when you understand what Jesus did for us. How He reconciled us to heaven as strangers. So that's an important purpose for us. As a family, kingdom driven, we are, the family uh, uh, is uh, under attack today. True? Is the family under attack today? The great controversy rages in our homes through financial arguments, through child discipline, through, through chores and, and daily work. Uh, the, the, the great controversy is not only a doctrine, beloved. It's, it's present in our homes. The home is under attack today. You know, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the scheme and the, and, and the style of the devil. His work. You know what's the devil's work? To destroy homes and, and, and relationships and husbands and wives. That's his job. He knows uh, that's where it will hurt the most and destroy people, you see. So the devil's job is to deceive, to, to uh, divide, and to destroy. That's his work. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life. It's the thief that comes to steal and kill. But I have come to be the glue to stick you together. What do you say this morning? These are some of the problems that causes breakdowns in homes. And here's the truth this morning to you. Here's the truth. 
I pray the Holy Spirit will keep you awake because you'll never hear this on television in the daily news, but you'll only hear it in the house of the Lord. Amen? Here's some of the problems that causes the breakdown of husband and wife and dysfunctional homes. You know, one of the most dangerous fish in the world today is not the piranha. Do you know about the piranha? JR, where do you find the piranha? I don't know. He doesn't know. You find the piranha where? In the Amazon. Of course, if you have to fall in some sections of the Amazon, you'll be history in about 10 seconds. Because the piranha is a man or a flesh-eating fish. They all converge on you and they eat you instantly. All of them come on you. But you know what's the most selfish fish in the most dangerous fish in the world today? That's right, selfish. You know, some of our Adventists are so particular, we don't want to eat shellfish, you know. We are holy and righteous about it. That's not a dangerous fish. That's the dangerous fish. Selfish. To help you remember it more, think about selfies, photo selfies. Selfish is the most dangerous fish that is destroying homes and families today. Isn't that true? Selfish. Wives are selfish. Husbands are selfish. Children are selfish. That's the cause of all conflict. Selfish. I don't explain much about that. You know what I'm talking about. But God wants to speak to you this morning. He wants to use you and your family. Heaven is choosing you this morning. That's why we must listen to what God's plan is for families. And not only families, this lesson is for individuals too. Unmarried, single, bachelors, all of them fit into this. The other, the other problem that brings the destruction or unhappiness in homes is unforgiveness. Just think about that. Now, beloved, as hard as it is to, for, to forgive someone, you have to forgive them. Right? Amen? I know it's hard to forgive when somebody offends us, when your spouse takes all your money from your wallet and leaves nothing else in there. And the other things, it's hard to forgive. But as followers of Jesus, we have no alternative. We're amb his ambassadors. He forgave, so we forgive. Amen? Really. When we are unforgiving, we are surrender surrendering to the enemy. Did you hear that? When we are unforgiving, we surrender to the enemy, to the destroyer. Let's move ahead. Lord, help my church family to listen to this today. God, that's one of the biggest problems for breakdown in relationships. God is not at the center of it. The, the, the statistics for divorces is just amazing around the world today. Even in Christian homes. You know, a... Uh, uh, a three-legged stool. Do you have a three-legged stool at home? Three-legged stool? If you have to break one leg, can you sit on that stool? What will happen? You will fall over. So you need that third leg for stability. And that third leg is God. Amen? You need that. So girls, if you're finding a husband, don't only look for a husband if he's rich and he drives a... BMW or a Mercedes and he has lots of money in the bank you know my wife was hoping to marry a rich man but she married instead a rich man of faith which would you prefer a rich man or a man rich in faith that's a tough one eh <laughs> that's a tough one <laughs> your mother would say marry that rich guy you know, there's this Bible commentator, if you know him, his name is Matthew Henry. Anybody know the commentary of Matthew Henry? He's free on your iPod. You get for nothing, and it's so wonderful, that commentary. Written by this great man, Matthew Henry. But he has an amazing story, you see. There was a girl whose father said, you better marry a rich man or don't bring any man to this house. And he pestered her. And one day, uh, she came to announce, Dad, I found the love of my life. 
I found the man of my dreams. And so Dad uh, promptly asked, who is this man? Well, uh, Dad, you may not know him, but okay. I, all I know, I want to know, is he rich? She says, you know what, Dad? Yes, indeed, he's rich. But he's rich in faith. Dad didn't want to hear about that. Why do you want to marry this man? And that was, a, was the biggest question and the question she'd love to answer. Why do you want to marry this man? And she said, you know what, Dad? This man is going somewhere. And you know what, Dad? I love where he's going, man. And I want to go with him. What do you say this morning? Matthew Henry, he's going somewhere. Don't you think so? And I, I love where he's going. You see, that's why you marry someone. Because you love where he's going. 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 To our eternal home. And so, I hope you will keep that lesson in mind. Here are some other issues that cause us breakdowns in homes and families. That prevent us from fulfilling God's purpose for families and individuals. Another one. Financial arguments and troubles. No financial transparency. You do what you feel like. You spend how you feel like. You spend more than you earn. You make more debts. Less payments of credit cards, more debts. If you, as God's children, pay minimum balance to your thousands in the credit card, I tell you something. You are putting an albatross around your neck, a chain around your neck. You will never be free to worship God in freedom and joy because you have that burden on your shoulders. So don't do that. If you don't have the money, you don't spend it. You use your credit card if there's only an emergency. And make sure that evening you go back and you transfer that into your visa account. Amen? Debt is one of the biggest problems in homes today. We are working for the bank. And so uh, let's keep that one in mind. Financial challenges. Now The other one is communication. If we are not good communicators at home, man, I'll tell you something, there's no happiness. You know, most of our talking is commanding, if you take notice. We command one another, do this, put this here, come and take this here, do this. That's how we talk at home. Lots of commanding, and then lots of judging, judging. Oh, you're like your father, man. You're like your mother. You are just like your family. And uh, you need to have a head scan or a brain scan. We start psychoanalyzing and that's how we talk at home. That's how brothers and sisters talk. And all of this is causing the breakdown and the downfall of growing in, in harmony and in peace in home. And so there's uh, lots of things. And there's the other one, unresolved conflicts. You know when conflicts are not resolved in the home or anywhere, even at the workplace, they grow like mountains until it becomes difficult to overcome unresolved conflict talk about it you got to get together as a family and husbands and wives sit down monday night is a gripe night every monday night we're going to talk of what's bothering us what's hurting us what we're unhappy about and when we get together as families and, and husbands and wives immediately when we get together don't start blaming one another it's your fault it's your fault and it's your fault that's not going to make any headway. We all take responsibility. Amen? Doesn't it take two to tango, Bella? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Two to tango. Two for everything. Yes. So unresolved conflicts. Solve your conflicts, guys. Invite a counselor. Invite the pastor if you want to, a church elder. Solve these conflicts so that you are at peace. Amen? Be at peace with one another. And then we've got unmet needs. Uh, we have lots of needs. Sense of belonging. We have security, safety needs. So many needs. Love needs. All of those needs. But where our spouses can't supply our needs, my God will supply our needs. Amen? Let's move ahead. The home is under attack through temptations of husbands and wives. Plenty of that. And isn't this true, guys? The family that? Is that true? So what's the opposite of that? It's dangerous. We grow apart, you see. The opposite of that. Let's move ahead. So building homes, 
uh, according to God's plan and design is for our best benefit. Let's move ahead, guys. Researchers have found these characteristics of strong families today that can survive turbulent times, challenging times, difficult times. And these are the values and characteristics. Number one, they committed to each other. They value one another. There's no individualism. Number two, plenty of appreciation. You see, if we don't appreciate, then naturally we depreciate one another. So there's more depreciation than appreciation and so forth. Uh, it's not nice to be told that you're looking old. Who loves to be told you're looking old? Certainly ladies don't love that. So we must uh, appreciate what we have. Amen? All right. And uh, make sure we appreciate each other lavishly. Spend time together. They, they spend time together. They work as a team. Do you work as a team at home? Or is only mother slogging it out? Or, or I don't know what's it like in your, in your home. Uh, father is slogging it out. We must work as a team. Children, let me see the, uh, the hands of children who believe in teamwork. That's all I've asked. Let me see the hands of our young people that believe in teamwork. Oh, I like these hands. Every, all of you believe in teamwork? I think that's the best thing you could have said this morning through your hands up. Teamwork. That makes a happy home. Amen? Amen? Really? If you use the bathroom, go and clean the bathroom after that. If you use the kitchen, go and clean the stuff you messed up there. Amen? If you use the lounge and the television, put it off. Get the place neat and clean and tidy. Amen? Don't let mother do that. Don't let father do that. And fathers, may God help you to be a team member in the house. Bring some relief to your tired working wife. Amen, wives? Amen. That's right. Teamwork. God's purpose for families, Seventh-day families especially, should be models on earth. Don't you think so? Here we are. They communicate kindly. That comes up all the time. They face crisis together. They enjoy a high degree of spiritual well-being. Look at that. Those are strong characteristics of strong families. How can we witness as families? That's the part for all of us. How can we witness as families? Because God has a purpose and plan for us. All right, let's move ahead. Number one. Number one, I want you to just go through this very quickly. All this is, uh, is setting the stage for you to uh, be effective family witnesses. These are the laws of su success today. If you want to start a project, if you want to go anywhere, do something effective and worthwhile, these are the laws of success for an individual person and for fathers, mothers, and, and for families. Set goals. If you haven't set a goal, you have nothing to aim for. This year will just pass. You've done nothing to enhance life and improve the quality of your life. Set goals, guys. Educate yourself. Without education, you'll earn minimum wages for the rest of your life. Really? Without education. Education is the key to the world. To, to feel good about yourself and to feel that you, you are enjoying a sense of achievement and accomplishment. Education, educate yourself. Let me say this in, 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 uh, in, in uh, five seconds. That's where I was. I was a slave to the economy. And I said, no ways I'm going to carry on like this in life. I've got to earn some degree so that I can move ahead in life. And I had the picture on my wall of... Uh, Heldeberg College, like CUC, you know. I had the, I say, Lord, that's my goal. That's my goal. That's my goal. I want to end up there. So I start now with step number one to finish my grade 12. And the Lord helped me to do that with prayer, beloved. Educate yourself. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Thank you, Bella. She said vegetarian. That's the healthiest lifestyle. God made us to be vegetarian. You can choose to be vegan, but God made us to be vegetarian. That was God's purpose and plan. Isn't that right? 
right? That's his place, purpose and plan. Whether you fulfill it or not will be to your advantage or disadvantage. That's all I can say. Let's move ahead. Um, have drive. If you don't have drive in you, you'll be like a lazy couch potato, you know. You can You've got no drive. That means you can't achieve. You've got no drive. No, no. We must have drive. We have, that means determination. I've got to finish this. I've got to accomplish this here. Today is not going to pass until I've read something and learned something so I can feel good this evening. Amen? You've got to have drive to finish up what you started. Those are laws of success, guys. And uh, the other ones is build, communicate, develop communication skills, build your life spiritually through a close relationship with Jesus. Now the world has followed most of it except the last one. They've been successful in many things, but they failed in the last one, and that's where the crack came in. And it either destroyed them, committed suicide. Look at Robin Williams, such a rich man, hey, a comedian. He had the command of listeners and audiences around the world, made so many movies. Funny man, made us laugh, but he hung himself. You see? You see, he had all the money in the world. I get you, sir, I guarantee you, if he had met the Lord of life and peace and joy, if he met the Lord of life, we shed his blood to give us value. He would never have hung himself. What do you say this morning? All right, let's move ahead. Number two, how can we witness as families? You've got to make a decision to do that, right? You've got to decide, yes, Lord, I want to make my family a kingdom-driven family. You have to decide. And once you decide to do that, you make a commitment. Like you get married. Are you ready to get married? You've got to decide to get married. A, a bachelor is still fiancé, uh, fiancé free and footloose, you know. You've got to decide if you want to get married. And if you do get married, then you have to commit to it. Amen? Some of you are taking too long to get married now. You can't be a bachelor for all your life. Some of you need to get married now. Bring, uh, bring, uh, add some uh, members to our church. Yeah, that's a wonderful way. Number, let's go to number, number three. Sorry, number three. This is this is uh, the foundation. You when you if you build a house, Jillian's built two houses. All of you, uh, anybody else built houses here? You know, there's two most important things before you build a house. What is the two things? What are the two things when you want to build a house? The plans. You've got, you got to make some plans. Okay, what's the next one? That's right. Some bright guys, yeah? The two important things is plans and a foundation. You're going to set that foundation. You want to pull a double story, a triple story? Is a foundation must be right, amen? For that house to stand. That's the first thing you do for any project you want to start in life. Whether you want to earn a degree, get a new job, buy a house, start a new business, start a new life, whatever you want to do, that's your foundation. Amen? Spend time with Jesus, guys. What do you say this morning? There is no other way to start anything. You'll never get the motivation and the love to do anything or the drive until you spend time with Jesus, guys. Okay. And in practical terms, that's what it means to spend time with Jesus. It means spending time in prayer, it means spending time reading the Word of God. What do you say this morning? Still the most powerful book in the world. The, the, the Bible is the roadmap to peace and happiness. And a roadmap out, of the, roadmap out of this world of sin and confusion. And of course, to add to your relationship with Jesus, to build that foundation, I recommend you reading Steps to Christ and Desire of Ages. Let me see the hands of those who have read Steps to Christ or Desire of Ages. I have some hands here. Some hands here. Any other hands? Well, good. Let those of you who haven't put your hands up, you have been very honest today. It's the Sabbath day. And I want to encourage you to start today to read those two books. Let's move ahead. Number, I just want to uh, let you know about the enormous benefits of spending time with Jesus uh, through the reading of His Word and also through prayer. How many of you are enjoying a prayer life? Let me see your hands up today. Those of you who are enjoying a prayer life, well, I just see one hand and two hand and a half a hand. 
and uh, two hands in front. Thank you for being honest. You're not going anywhere without a prayer life. Really, guys. You're not going anywhere. You just go in circles. Really. All right. It's my type, uh, uh, it is my prayer that you would uh, spend some prayer life. I want you to look at this for a moment. I want you to look at it. We're talking about the power of families and uh, purpose in which God designed families. Look at the benefits of spending time with Jesus. Really. I want you to look at this benefit. Benefit number one. You know, we all look for benefits and rewards. If it doesn't come, we don't, we don't get involved. But there's the benefits and rewards. Number one, you feel loved. You feel significant. You feel valued. We live in a world that, that devalues human beings. Life is cheap today. They can cut your neck off. They can kill you. and uh, You die in this world. Uh, people uh, talk to us as if we are dirt. You know, we don't matter. We don't count. Ah, you're just an Indian from India, you know. You're just a Filipino. You know, when we come to Jesus, we're not just a Filipino. We're not just an Indian. We're a precious child and son and daughter of God. Ambassadors of our high calling. We are special. That's what we feel. You want to feel special? You want to feel loved? You sit at the feet of Jesus. You spend time reading His Word and you'll feel that love all of you like a beautiful shower on a, on a hot day. Number two. Number two. Number two. You receive wisdom and direction. Too much of foolish living today. We have no wisdom to make choices. We make foolish choices that come to bite us and hurt us. Why? We have no wisdom from the Word of God. No direction. We don't know where we're going. Amen? This is a wonderful benefit, guys. And young people should be taking the most note today of spending time with the Lord. I did it, and I'm thankful for where I am today. Some of my friends, uh, they criticized me and made fun of me for not coming outside the house and participate. But I'm thankful for that. It paid off well. They said, Ken, let's go to the movies tonight. I said, oh, no ways, guys. I, I don't really want to go to the movies. And I spent it that time doing something more uplifting and better. Wisdom and direction. Number four, number three. You will receive spiritual strength, comfort, courage, and hope. You can't buy this at Superstore. What do you say this morning? I want you to stand up for now. Everybody, please stand up. Just stretch your hand a little bit. Stretch your hands inside and outside. That's right. Let some blood start pumping. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you a little bit. And if you can stand up and breathe fresh air, your mind opens up. And you can listen and absorb. Do that in the morning. First thing in the morning, you know. Okay. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, right. The next benefit is... The next benefit of spending time, spending time with the Lord is your behavior and attitude changes. Can I invite you just to be quiet, just for a little more, guys, just a little more time before lunch. I had a guy come up to me at Camp Hope for the anointing service during camp meeting. He was between 75 and 80 years old. And he came to me. Several pastors were administrating anointing and he came in and he sat there and he burst out crying. I, a 80 year old guy, well dressed for the Sabbath, all of that, and he began to cry. I let him cry. Can you believe that? It's good to cry too, guys. You release frustration, you, you release the toxins of distress and anxiety, you see, you release all of that. It's good to cry. Crying is a healthy exercise. We live in a world that says men shouldn't cry. But they deprive themselves of, 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 of this wonderful privilege of crying. So he's, after he stopped crying, I said, what can we pray for today before I anoint you? You know what he said to me? He says, I, pray for me, Pastor. I, I don't seem to get along well with people. I can't get along with my sons all my grandchildren and my wife and family. I'm like a thorn. I'm like a barbed wire. And he burst out crying again. 80 years old. 
That's what I told him. I said, Jack, if you want to change your behavior and your mood, nothing can do it. Of course, alcohol, alcohol can alter your mind, your behavior in a very uh, negative way and drugs and all of that. But the best drug to get on a high is to come and sit at the feet of Jesus and learn to love him. And your behavior will change. If you're stubborn and if you're uncompromising at home, if you're stubborn, lots of stubbornness in our houses. I tell you something. Spending time with Jesus will soften you up like never before. None of us can be proud of our achievements. But my wife can testify that for all the years we are married, today she can say that your life has really changed from what you were when I married you. Isn't that wonderful? To get a good compliment from my wife for that. And I attribute that for the fact of spending time with my Bible and prayer. You don't read your Bible for information only. You read it. You read it for the author of life to touch you and to heal you and to renew your mind, soul and body. Isn't that right? The Apostle Paul, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. This mind of love and compassion and this love of tolerance and patience so we can share that with our loved ones. All right. So number five, you learn to love the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in obedience. And number six, you will experience the blessings of God. Don't ever equate money and success with blessings. Don't ever do that. Those are the spin-offs from a disciplined life and, a, and from hard work. That's all that is. Your true blessings comes from Jesus. And it could go beyond money. And the values and blessings that he gives you, it will bring you the greatest peace and joy. You'll never hunger and thirst for more. Number seven, you will handle your challenges more effectively. If you have to meet a crisis, a health challenge, a financial crisis, a job crisis, a home crisis, a wife crisis, a husband crisis, you can handle it more, care, more effectively once you've spent time with the Lord. Amen? Then you'll be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. That's the spin-offs. How can we witness as families to fulfill the purpose that God has made us for? Another way is to have your per a personal testimony. What is a personal? Look what Revelation says. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. If your testimony can overcome the devil, imagine how it can overcome stubborn hearts and lives today and win them for the Lord. So what is a testimony? A testimony is your personal experience with the Lord as a follower of Jesus in love and obedience to Him. That's your testimony. You have to have a testimony to share with your friends. You know, I was a lost man and I did all the worst things in life. But I, when I met the Lord, He touched me in such a beautiful way. And I am now a new creature in Christ. Amen? That's what it is about. That's a testimony. And these are parts of a testimony, guys. A testimony is my life before I met Christ, my life after I met Christ, my life now, new life. I am happy now with the Lord Jesus Christ and I am eagerly waiting His return. What do you say this morning? That is a testimony. It is my prayer that every one of you will carry a testimony. It will make it easy to reach people today. Amen? All right. Use technology. Use Facebook. Some of us spend a lot of time on Facebook. Sometimes too much of time. But now I'm encouraging you to spend it in a very practical and a very effective way. Spread the gospel. Talk about Jesus and his soon coming. Talk about power over sin and difficulties in Jesus through your Facebook. Through, personal, your, through your personal website, through emails, letters, and phone calls. Do that as a family. Spend quality time doing something constructive to, to further the kingdom of God. I pray that you will do that today, guys. 
You have iPods, iPads, Mac Pros, Air Pros, you name it. You the pro as well. You have so much. Use it to fulfill God's plan. Amen? Not just for your selfishness. Number five. How can we witness as families? Through acts of kindness. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. I can read this to you very quickly. Give a flower, eat lunch with somebody, listen to someone, visit the sick friend, clean the neighbor's garden, yard, walk, offer a hug, give an unexpected gift, make a new friend, pick up litter, say hello, make a new friend, open a door, carry a load, plant a tree. Here's it. Look at this. Thank a teacher, give blood, uh, read to a child, do one kind act, leave a thank you note, offer your seat, be generous financially, let another go first, give a compliment, pay the next driver's toll, lend a hand, give a balloon to a child, offer a ride, respect others, encourage a child, walk a dog, do a favor, forgive mistakes, drive courteously, and share Share a smile. Huh. At least we can do that one. Eh? Let's go to, the, to number six. Another effective way we can fulfill the purpose of God and be a witnessing family is to have home parties. My wife used to have Tupperware parties, you know. I'm still uh, trying to figure out where the money went to, but all I see is more plastic. We have more plastic than ever in the entire stage of our lives. Tupperware all over the place. But it's very effective. People come. People come if you have a home party. And in that home party, you can do some wonderful things. Don't you think so? In that home party, you can have a video. You can share a Bible prophecy. You can share a Bible study. You can, you can share something beautiful. Don't you think so? You can share music. The Filipinos are so good in music. Open your home and have a music concert. Invite your neighbors. And I must thank God for Jack Wordsworth. You know Jack Wordsworth? Jack Man and Judy. You know? Every, every Christmas, Jack opens his house for the neighbors so they can come and hear all the Christmas carols, which they will never hear in their whole life. They all are atheists out there in Morgan Creek. What are you doing to open your home? Is it just for your luxury? Your own enjoyment, all the rich furnishings you had, what was it for? It'll all perish, beloved, but it's all the eternal things that last forever, don't you know? Once we plant seeds in the mind. Think about it. We've got to revolutionize our, our family life now. And so that's we, what we can do as families, so much. And uh, we can uh, close on this one, but I want you to listen to this one. As I said to you, I shared this at Sorry Filipino. Uh, sorry English church last night and they felt very blessed about all this this one anybody heard of the new start program has anybody heard of the new start program nobody one here one day two there for the rest of you don't know what the new start program is this is what the new start program is about let's get to this Let's get to that. That's what the New Start program is all about. Uh, let's get to the acronym first. Let me get to that. That's the New Start. It's also called the Eight Doctors. Now, why, why I'm sharing this with you, the best tool to use today that is user-friendly, not judgmental, won't make bad friends, keep them coming, is to use something very pleasant and something that has top results. Everybody's interested in it. Look at that. N stands for nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trusting God. You all need new start here. What is temperance? Can somebody tell me what is temperance? That's right. That's right. We need a lot of temperance amongst ourselves too. Not only that we uh, tend to overeat and sleep with overeating, we sleep late. We love sleeping late. You see, that's intemperance. And we can't get up in the morning. So we need this program for ourselves, let alone our neighbors and friends. And so, my dear friends, you can see what the last one is there. Rest. We can talk about the Sabbath. Rest. 
And look at that last one. It's a way of introducing God. Trust in God. So as families, I want to encourage you now to use this new start for your home. And have a party in your house. And that's what, uh, there's some nice pictures about it. Nutrition, exercise. People love that. Water. Water is so healthy and good. People love it. Sunshine. How we can benefit from it. Be careful of uh, over ultraviolet rays. What about temp What about oxygen? All of this is, is the doctors that keep us healthy and strong. Oxygen opens your mind. Every morning without fail, before I eat, I go outside and gulp in fresh air. Open your lungs. Let that oxygen feed the brain cells. Otherwise, you become drowsy and dull. You can't read. You won't even work properly. Gulp oxygen. That's how important it is. Your body feeds on food. Your brain feeds on oxygen. So guys, I leave this with you. Use this program in your homes with families and friends and your neighbors. Call them. Let them come into your house. Change Said hope. What do you say? The glory of the feeling of our great God. What a day of the Lord. We're talking about getting ready for the second coming. Can you do all that you heard now? Show your mouth family. Can be involved and be ready for the Lord to come. Look at that. What can be ready for you to say? Amen. That's how it is. So what can be ready? All that I shared with you. Recall from their countries. How can we occupy? Is what I just shared with you. And so, guys, life is turbulent these days. Life is very challenging. And I'm so thankful that I know the captain who can take me through the turmoil of life and help me from day to day. Is he your captain today? Is he your captain in life? If he is not, I hope that you will choose him today because everybody is leading us astray. We have no guidance today. We only get it from the captain of life. He can only take us through the treacherous waters of life. Are you ready to come on board this morning as a witnessing family? That's a challenge for you now. Are you ready to come on board as a witnessing family? Are you ready to use your potential as husbands and wives and sons and daughters and families of God? Are you ready to come on board? It is my prayer that you will. Are you ready to, to take, take him as your captain and your guide in life? Are you ready to do that? If you're ready, I praise the Lord for it in your heart. Would you like to stand? Let the Lord know. And say, Lord, as for me and my house, we can serve the Lord. That was the way Joshua, that's where Joshua had a purpose of God's plan for his family. I don't care about the rest of you, but he said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord here. Yeah. Amen? And I tell you what, your neighbors will admire you, your neighbors will respect you, and your neighbors will bring more people. Yo, I tell you, we'll fill our church up here with kingdom-ready people, man. May God bless. Thank you for standing. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you this morning. For giving us the best advice and guidance that we can buy anywhere in this world. Not in the shopping malls. Not in the uh, places of fun and entertainment. Even at the p and &E, We can spend all day at the p and &E, But we will never be given the advice that is of eternal value. That will bring us inner peace and inner joy and happiness. We thank you for the privilege of being families and God-chosen husbands and wives. Help us to use our God-given potential. And make our homes a temple of praise and worship, a, a seminary, a workshop, a workshop, a Bible workshop, a family, a health workshop, a music workshop, so that others may be inspired and feel blessed and glorify our Father in heaven. Thank you for those who have stood up today to commit 
to start the commitment of being a family witness. Forgive us where we have failed you. And, and may we start again. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Make our home sweet and brighter with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. I appreciate this morning. May you go home blessed today and have a happy Sabbath and start off a beautiful day.